a meeting of the Commission on Appointment on the Committee on Constitutional Commissions and Offices. And our agenda for today is the deliberation on the nomination of Mr. Ray Echevarria Bulay as Commissioner, Commission on Elections for a term expiring on February 2, 2027, Vice uh, Commissioner Louis Tito F. Digia. Uh, the meeting, please come to order. The meeting of the Committee on Constitutional Commission and Offices of the Commission on Appointment in the third regular session of the 18th Congress is hereby called to order. Okay. The chair, or rather, the secretary of the commission is directed to call the roll. Thank you very much. Madam Chairperson, <laughs> the officers and members of the Committee on Constitutional Commissions and Offices of the Commission on Appointments are as follows. The Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Cynthia A. Villar is present. The other officers and members of this committee are Ferrer the Fourth, Present. Alvarez Jr. Present. Arbison, Cagas, Chepeco Jr., De La Rosa, present, Go, Laxon, Noel, Pangilinan, Hello. But. Eventual the third. O. Present. Ramirez Sato. Present. Tawagan kita nasa ano. Recto. Revilla Jr. Present. Subiri. Zamora. Almario. Consec present for Juan. Villanueva. Pancho. Trilon. Present. Present. Advincula. Advin 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 present, sir. Pancho present. Aron. Present. Senator Bongo is uh, acknowledged as present. Yes. Senator Ralph Recto is acknowledged as present. Also me, Mr. President, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Madam, Senator Madam. Pimentel is acknowledged as present. Elena. Uh, with two present in person and 14 present online, we have 16 members present. Uh, the chair declares the existence of quorum. The chair acknowledges the presence of Senator Ping Lakson. And uh, under consideration of this committee is the nomination of Mr. Ray Bulay as Commissioner, Commission on Elections for a term expiring on February 2, 2027, Vice Louis Tito F. Guia. May we now hear Secretary Villacorta's report on the status of the jurisdictional requirements in compliance with the new rules of the Commission and the new rules of the Standing Committees and other relevant information about the nominee. 
Thank you very much, Madam Chair, Your Honors. The Commission on Appointments received on November 11, 2021, the nomination of Mr. Ray Echevarria Bulay and was referred to the, by the Chairperson of the Commission, the Sentence so to the third, to the Committee on Constitutional Commissions and Offices on November 11, 2021, pursuant to Section 16, Chapter 5 of the New Rules of the Commission. The said nomination was published on November 16, 2021, in two newspapers of general circulation, the Manila Times and the Manila Standard, and broadcast over PTB4 station on November 15, 2021, pursuant to Section 2, Article 2 of the New Rules of the Standing Committees. Mr. Bulay has complied with the submission of the mandatory documentary requirements on November 22, 2021, as provided for in Section 24, Chapter 6 of the New Rules of the Commission. In a, later, in a letter dated 24, November 2021, Mr. Bulay furnished your Secretariat with his letter of even date to Senator Cynthia A. Villar, Committee Chairperson on Constitutional Commissions and Offices, requesting that he be allowed to attend online during the consideration of his nomination scheduled today, December 1. Mr. Bulay, however, withdrew his earlier request in his letter dated 26 November, received by your Secretariat on 29 November, and manifested that instead he will be physically present during the deliberation on his nomination today. Both letters were transmitted to the officers and members of the commission. There is no sworn opposition filed against the nomination of Mr. Ray Echevarria Bulay. That is all, Madam Chairperson, your honors. Thank you. Uh, can we ask now Secretary Villacorta to administer the oath to Mr. Ray Bula. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this proceeding, so help you God? I do. Madam Chair, the nominee is now under oath. Mr. Bula, you may now proceed with your introductory statement. Madam Chair, uh, Honorable Members, uh, permission to remove my mask. Anyway, I submitted both RT-PCR and antigen test results. <laughs> Madam Chairperson, Honorable Members, I am very fortunate I consider myself very fortunate to be before you today in this very opportune and daunting task that is before me, assuming I get confirmed, that it humbles me rather than go through who I am, what I am, what I was. Madam Chair, Honorable Members, please permit me to manage your expectations instead. I see the Commission on Elections from the eyes of a candidate as I was a politician way back. I didn't have only the good opportunity to vote for you, most of you, in this august body, but even campaign for you. I recall the first election in 1988, I was the only one with the Nationalist Party against uh, the Liberal Party back then. And then in 92, um, I was with the PDP Laban Mitra Wing then, uh, as I recall, not to forget, though, that Muntinlupa back then was a single district together with its twin city, 
Las Piñas City, and I had the good opportunity to vote for Congressman Aguilar, the late father of the Honorable Chairperson of this August body. I recall the last ele in 95 election, I, would, I was with Lacas, together with then Secretary Toting Dunyi. And after nine years, though it was extended to 10 years because it was the first election after martial rule, uh, I ended my term in 98. And my brother took over. I was asked to run again in 2007 after nine years, this time with the Liberal Party, together with incumbent mayor, Jaime R. Presnedi of Montinlupa, which I won. But then I was a lawyer already. In 92, I would like, given no other chance, I would like to thank the Senate President most especially then Speaker Manuel Villar for taking very good care of the city of Montinlupa. Until that time when we wanted our very own district and we, the good Senate President was a little bit younger then. And when the Honorable Senator Maceda went to the washroom, that gave him a chance to endorse the, the passage of Republic Act 7926, the city charter of Montinlupa. So in behalf of the city of Montinlupa, I thank the Honorable Senate President. This, I find no opportune time to do this, forgive me. I consider myself, Madam Chair, I want to be able to talk this to this August body because I consider myself as one of you because I, like all the rest of the members of this committee, are politicians. I don't know why in all the codification of election books, when they mention stakeholders, they only refer to uh, providers, uh, agencies. Well, they should contain two very important stakeholders, the electorate and the candidates. That is how I would like to see a vision of how the COMELEC should be. And since elections are done every three years, the COMELEC has more time to spend with a vast array of talents, like a Mount Olympus of talents in public service and politics to consult with and to come up with good election laws that will address the present time. Mundane example, please permit me, Madam Chair, Honorable Members, like the authorized expense for per voter of candidates. The Omnibus Election Code, vintage 1985, pegged it at 150 per voter with no qualifications. Even back then, prices of goods and services will not parry with the amount. Now, it was amended in 1991 by the Synchronized Election Code, RA 7166. It was amended to provide 10 pesos for the offices of president and vice president per voter three pesos for candidates with no political parties, uh, with political parties rather, and five pesos for those without political parties. So hence the difficulty when we are asked to file our SOCHE. Because definitely inflation and exchange rates hindi po tumatama dun sa mga values na yon. Miski, cola. So I think uh, until the last November 2021 resolution, the resolution of the co present commission still espouse the same rates today. So I see we have a lot of things to do, especially come next year. 
considering that the three commissioners will end their term by February 2, leaving only three commissioners in the commission. Ms. Madam Chair, Honorable Members, I am Ray Echabaria Bulay. I am the incumbent city prosecutor of Manila. I was nominated by His Excellency President Rodrigo Roa Duterte, 10 November 2021, to the position of Commissioner of the COMELEC. I opted a nomination instead of an ad interim appointment for two reasons. Number one, I would like to see the consideration of this August body as regards my nomination. And the second one, the more selfish one, I wouldn't have to resign my commission as city prosecutor as of yet in the chance that I don't get confirmed. I submit myself very humbly for the consideration of this commission. Thank you very much for having me today. Thank you, Mr. Bulay. Uh, we want to acknowledge online the presence of Joaquin, Congressman Joaquin M. Chipeco, Jr. And uh, the nominee is now ready to respond to any comment or question from the members. We will give priority to the single person, who, single senator who is present today. Uh, that's the, and then we will call on the others online. We recognize now Senator Ping Lakson. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, if I may be allowed, uh, I would just like to ask uh, maybe a couple of questions. You know, the uh, nominee. Uh, you have joined quite a number of political parties, as you mentioned in your opening statement. You know. I don't know if it will uh, uh, enhance your cause because most of the members of this committee are either from Liberal Party, Nationalista Party, uh, PDP Laban, uh, what else? But uh, I'm not sure if it is your uh, good fortune or, you know, or not that you have not joined Partido Reforma. <laughs> and uh, Nationalist that. People's Coalition. <laughs> <laughs> Incidentally, the Senate President uh, and the uh, uh, Chairman of the uh, uh, of this uh, Commission, Commissioner Appointments, uh, is the Chairman of the Nationalist uh, People. Anyway, levity aside, uh, Mr. Nomini. No, I, I have read your uh, uh, your resume. No, binigay kami ng summary information. And I would say that you have a very impressive, uh, you have very impressive uh, credentials. You know? Wala po ako masabi. Having said that, I would just like to ask uh, one simple question. First, uh, who recommended you to be, this is, call it a test of honesty, no? <coughs> who recommended you to be uh, commissioner of the COMELEC? Madam Chair, may I reply? Honorable, Senator Lakson, uh, after my appointment at the PCGG, I applied for the position for two positions. One is City Prosecutor of Manila, and one is Commissioner of Comelec. It was of my own volition, uh, and then the time came when. They said the post for city prosecutor of Manila is open, while the COMELEC post is also open. I opted for, shall we say, a less fancier post, um, city prosecutor of Manila, not national in scope. Um, one thing to just finish my term in an institution that is provided with a good retirement plan. That's to be honest. And then came the vacancies in this present position. We lawyers, I attended, I have normally have problem working with collegial bodies, to be honest, sir. Uh, so, I studied last October 
at the PILJA, the Philippine Judicial Academy, because when you apply for appellate courts, you get to work with colleagues in a division. So um, I didn't know if it will fit me. So when this came, there were online things in our San Beda Law Alumni, which informs you of this opening. So I called up PMS and followed up if tatlong pages yung aplikante nila for the post. And they said, uh, we will consider uh, back on track your application. That is what happened, sir. And then... When all these developments came with the president's daughter, with uh, Senator Bongo lately, I didn't want anymore to go to Comilec because of the political ruckus, which I didn't know what will happen. But when I was told that the problem was there will be on February 2, there will only be three members and we have a, an election coming. Nobody's running for the administration. I don't think, I, I think as soldiers, kasi palagi ko pong sinasabi yun eh, pag sundalo ka, ang daddy ko po, sundalo eh. Wala kang choice. Sumunod ka muna bago ka mag-question. Mas gusto ko ho yung kaharian ko sa Maynila. Eh, tawag po ng trabaho at tingin ko naman po, kung papayagan nyo ako, may magagawa akong paraan eh. Talagang malayo ho yun. As a candidate, may mga bagay po na hindi fair na nando doon sa COMELEC. And it's the 18th Congress or the 19th Congress ang magagawa siguro ng bagong codification ng libro para doon. Also, I saw the advocacies of the senators, please permit me, yung kay Senator Joel Villanueva na gusto niya yung independence ng COMELEC kasi yung batas nilagay sa LGU, eh kung si Hal po ano, kami nagbibigay ng sasakyan, ng allowance sa election officer, eh paano ho magiging independent yun? Di ba po? Sa Manila po, ang Department of Justice baka gusto na rin natin idamay kasi... Kami yung mga prosecution service, doon din kami naasa. E pag may kaso po, yung mga barangay captain ng mga mayor, hindi mo ho, hindi, walang in, yung independence na tini, sinasabi nila Senator Joel at saka ni Senator Soto at saka ni Senator Aini. Yung kay Senator Bong Rebilla na sinasabing uh, i-reclassify at iayos yung salary grades. Tama po yun, Senator, kasi yung pangangailangan po ng servisyo ng COMELEC requires a new breed of government workers. It to think na it has the all-important mandate of safeguarding the sanctity of the ballot so that the people's will will not be thwarted. E yun ang basis natin lahat eh, if, if, if you come to think of it. Sorry po for the long answer. I'm very sorry, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your uh, response. My uh, last question is on the Q server, if you have heard of it. And what's your view on the Q server? They used to call it Meet Me Room. Uh, this was, I think, introduced first in 2016, and in the 2016 elections. And uh, it seems that there's no transparency in the what you may call Meet Me Room, because it's exclu exclusive to some uh, foreigners or foreign consultants of Smartmatic. So what's your view on the uh, Q server? Thank you very much, Madam Chair. May I have the floor, please? Um, I, I have come across that one in the 2016 elections and a bit worried also. I share the same feelings. Although the current system speaks of four safeguards for the BCM, I don't think that is still included now. You have review source code review, one by ICE, the International Certification Entity, and one by people like us, local interested parties. That is happening on June, on January 29th, I think. 
we can review the source codes. And then comes the system. Uh, you have canvassing in three points. You have uh, the server for the media. You have the server for the local government units. And then you have the server for the COMELEC, which proclaims the winners for the election. So all four servers can generate information at the same time. Um, the last one is the voter, the BB, uh, PA. It's like a receipt when you vote. The BCM comes out with what you shaded. And then you can check what you shaded. And then it is put back in a receptacle so you can take pictures of it and then maningil ka ng bayad sa labas dahil ibinoto mo. Uh, yung chat room, sir, I don't think it's included now in the system. The few servers no longer included? I don't think so. I never saw it in the most recent uh, resolution. I reviewed all, sir. Kasi po, Commissioner, ano, uh, Mr. Nomini, ganito ang, pro ang proseso sa pagkakaintindi ko because we uh, received a briefing on this. Ano. From the precinct, before it is transmitted to the municipality, dadaan muna sa queue server. From the precinct, bago pumunta sa provincial, dadaan muna sa queue server. From the precinct, bago tumuloy sa national uh, canvassing board, ano, dadaan muna sa queue server. Mukhang doon nagkakaroon ng problema because there's no transparency. As I mentioned earlier, uh, we heard reports that uh, it is an exclusive meet me room. No, no one is allowed entry or access to the meet me room. Now that you said that it's no longer included, that feature is no longer included, that's quite you know heart heartwarming to say the least. No? To, to know that it will no longer be uh, in practice because you know dito nagkaroon ng whether uh, correct or not, ano? whether totoo o hindi, merong alilangan because bakit mga foreign consultants lang ang pwede mag-access do sa tinatawag na meet me room. So, yun lang po ang aking concern and uh, uh, I hope we can be definite na wala na yung meet me room uh, in the May 2022 uh, national elections. Thank you. Uh, Mr. If you want to respond, please. Hello, Mr. Chair, Honorable Senator Lapson. Please permit me to get back to you on that. I will confirm it myself. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. By the way, we have a common friend who called me yesterday. I won't mention his name anymore. So, sabi ko, gigisahin ko pa naman sana, pero sige. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Uh, Madam Chairperson. Uh, thank you, Senator King Lakson. Uh, are you satisfied? Okay, so we we will now hear uh, the questions from uh, our minority floor leader, Senator Franklin Drillon. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair. And I would like to raise a few points on the good nominee. <clears throat> First of all, let me state on record <clears throat> I, that I do not personally... Uh, Senator Drillon, can you please uh, uh, improve your audio? We cannot understand. Well, uh, uh, I am on, and I have, I am supposed to be uh, unmuted. I, I, this is the best that I can uh, have, uh, unless something. Okay. I could not improve it anymore, ma'am. This is okay. You're okay now. Okay. Senator thank you very Drillon. much, ma'am. Okay. Ma'am, so I will repeat, I do not personally know the nominee, but I did ask from the uh, political leaders in Munting Lupa, since that is where the nominee built his political and professional career, and uh, they have nothing but admiration and endorsement uh, on the uh, nominee. Uh, they have, they, you know, even if they if 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 they belong on the opposite side of the uh, uh, of the political fence, uh, my acquaintances in uh, Wanting Lupa has indicated that 
Uh, indeed, the nominee has been uh, is a stickler to the legal concepts, and uh, and uh, he is reputed to be very strict uh, on his uh, subordinate on his subordinates in requiring compliance with the rules. Having said that, however, Mr. President, I mean, I mean, Madam Chair, uh, I would like to uh, ask a few questions. But before that, let me spread into the record that I, I, I commend, I commend the uh, nominee for his candor at the very least. His candor in saying that uh, he did not want a, an ad interim appointment because that will require him to quit from his present post as city prosecutor of Manila. And, uh, and, uh, and that is a, a, a very, to me, that is an admirable attitude and uh, uh, candor in saying that, you know, I don't want to lose my job if this good uh, commission on appointment does not confirm me. I also, uh, no feel that uh, the the, uh, the uh, nominees uh, are spreading into the record his political affiliation augurs well for him and uh, uh, he said that he called the PMS uh, when asked uh, uh, who when, when asked who recommended him um, uh, and he reminds me of the answer of Another person, uh, resource person of the committee on Blue Ribbon in the Senate, who made the sim a similar answer, but was not believed at all, uh, but because of the that the, the uh, reputation of the good uh, nominee precedes him, I, I accept his uh, his response. One thing I noted uh, with uh, the uh, opening statement of uh, the uh, good nominee is his statement that uh, he is uh, very much concerned and rightfully so of the independence of the COMELEC uh, election officers <coughs> and uh, let me spread into the record my support for that statement but for that situation to occur uh, the, I agree with the good nominee that there must be independence financially. And the financial independence of the COM elect, uh, uh, election officers would be tainted by uh, allowances being given by the local government unit. Ito lang pong binibigyan ng allowance yan eh. Kaya uh, ang hirap, uh, you know, the perception of independence is colored by that allowance, uh, grant of allowance. And I'm saying this because I confronted, I was confronted with the same situation when I was Secretary of Justice. Uh, the prosecutors, like our nominee now, we, uh, I mean, uh, the city prosecutors, the prosecutors, and even the judges are given allowances by the LGUs. Eh, kaya pag may kaso yung mga LGU, eh, talaga walang laban dun sa, I mean, the perception of, in, of uh, independence gets muddled. And that is why I did increase the allowances of, my, of our prosecutors. And that can be checked in the Department of Justice. And uh, they were happy, that, uh, but I required that the prosecutor should no longer receive um, uh, allowances from the LGUs. Yes, they complied with it, but only for six months, because after six months, they lobbied with the city council to grant them the allowances again. So it's back to the old system. Uh, but I'm interested in the statement of the good uh, nominee that we should maintain the independence of the election officers. May I know what the nominee has in mind to achieve this very laudable purpose of maintaining the independence of our election, of election officers? Madam Chair. Yeah. Uh, honorable members, thank you very much for the question. The Honorable Minority Floor Leader, I commend the Overseas Act of 2003. 
for sponsoring that. Although we COMELEC still has the job to find out what kind of votation they will hold, country per country, post per post. Sir, with all due respect, I find it, I find it funny that there are many agencies under the DOJ at present. When I was with the PCGG, I can change even my toilet bowl. What I'm driving at is the process of budgeting. You have, in, man, in, in NCR alone, you have 13 prosecution offices. They require from ink to paper to printer. Would you believe that when I came into the City Hall, OCP Manila being la creme de la creme, wala pong printer, wala pong internet, and lahat po e-filing na dahil gawa ng COVID. I was really surprised to see that. Ngayon, lalo na po sa COMELEC kasi they're not as big as the prosecution offices. So, Ini-imagine ko, nung konsihal po ako for a good 14 years, no po, ina-approvahan namin sa national budget yung sasakyan, personal detail, driver, gasolina, at saka, at saka tauhan na pandagdag ng election officer. So hindi ka mananalo sa amin kung kalaban ka namin sa eleksyon. So yung independence, I mean, Ngayon, ang dami ng budget eh. I can see, kung di lang tayo tinamaan itong pandemya na ito, kaya ng budget ang lahat para magkaroon ng sarili. And this 18th Congress, I consider myself very fortunate to tell you this, to be able to tell you this, because ito na yung pangarap eh. We're, we're here. And I'm very fortunate to have all of you to pick your brains and your talent. Hindi lang sa, eh, biro nyo, Pag kami, ang COMELEC halimbawa nagsabi, Madam Chair, na oh, voter registration from this period to this period, election this period. Kumbaga sa ulam po, blandan dating. Pero yung mga politiko, katulad natin, you don't just get them to register. You don't just get them to vote. They, you can even get them to vote for you. Hindi pa ho yun ang katotohanan. Madali lang. Madali lang. Kasi incentivize sila by whatever manner, incentivize sila, but still you have the same results. So kung yung independence po magkakaroon ng sariling budget, ang COMELEC offices, ng hiwalay na lugar, independent as they should be, hindi po mahirapan yung COMELEC main at lahat po ng branches ng government na enforce yung lahat ng dapat enforce so that parehas po ang level ng playing field. I will admit though, Your Honor, that although the design of constitutional commissions is independence, the reality is hindi naman they can't do their mandate without the help of all three branches of government, especially Congress especially Congress. If you look at it, because I got the chance to review it, afraid of the questions the Honorable Minority Floor Leader will ask me, the Honorable Ping Lakson will ask me, and all the members, especially the Chair, ayoko pong mapahiya dahil nagkaroon po sa Muntinlupa eh, sa labas, nga lang. Uh, uh, Pinag-aralan ko po yun, and if, if forgive the term, ano po, yung resolutions, hodgepodge po ito, legislation, you still have to check if they really fall in line with what the law says. Yung Omnibus Election Code 881 na 1985 vintage at saka yung Synchronized Election Law at saka yung Fair Elections Act para masabi mo that what COMELEC issued as a resolution is really what the law says. Otherwise, unconstitutional yung legislation. Yeah. 
Uh, Tama Mr. po. But sir, I'm sorry so, I took a long yeah. time. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. Yes, uh, I was trying to. Yes, um, I have other colleagues who would want to ask questions. If you can uh, respond in a more uh, concise manner, I would appreciate it. Um, just a few. Are you in favor? Oh, okay. Uh, are you in favor of a legislation which would prohibit the grant of allowances uh, by the LGUs to independent bodies such as prosecution or those who are exer exercising quasi judicial functions like the prosecution, uh, the COMELEC, and uh, even the, 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 and the judiciary? Would you favor a legislation that would prohibit? the LGUs from granting these allowances, provided, of course, that uh, uh, the uh, allowances granted under the national budget is sufficient. 100%, sir. I am in favor, Madam Chair, honorable yeah. members. Okay, now, thank you very much for that. You also mentioned and was, was, uh, was not comfortable <clears throat> and was critical of the... Uh, level of expenses allowed under the election code for candidates uh, mentioning that or, or asserting that the inflation uh, has made this, uh, the, uh, the, the limits uh, almost uh, unrealistic. I agree with you. Uh, would you favor um, uh, a, a law which would allow the COMELEC to set under certain standards, the limit of, of, of candidates expense uh, uh, with uh, inflation as a principal consideration. I am asking you this because we passed a the Congress passed a law, which I authored, which adjusted and I'm sure you know this, which adjusted the terms of detention based on the money values, but the money values were set in 1936 and the penalties were based on the values of the money in 1932 or 1936 when the revised penal code was enacted. Uh, we adjusted that and uh, adjusted it to inflation so that it became more realistic. Similarly, would uh, you agree that basically the COMELEC should be allowed to set uh, the maximum voters expense uh, and adjust it regularly based on uh, economic conditions and the inflation rate? 100%, Your Honor, Madam Chair, Honorable Members, I agree. And, uh, okay, <clears throat> would you care to uh, provide us with a proposed simple legislation on this point uh, as part of, of, uh, of, of the reforms that you want to do uh, if confirmed by this body? Madam Chair, Honorable Members, this is how I look at it. I, I look at it as a form of incentives for our people, for them to participate. Look at the vaccine. It is 100% proven that it prevents infection. Pero kasi voluntary. So hindi mo may enforce. Like elections, registration, and voter registration, and voter turnout, although obligatory, pero hindi pa rin nagagawa eh. So, kaya ako sinabi, that's why, uh, Your Honor, I mentioned that stakeholders should refer to candidates and to the electorate. Eh, kasi yung pera spent on them will be an incentive for them to participate. I mean, let's face it, yun actually ang kailangan. And Piling our Sochi. Hindi naman po masyadong kapanipaniwala yun, lalo na kung national elections. And yet, we go through the motion. Ito, we're willing, I'm willing to commission a study ng dapat na gastos ng presidente, vice president, senador. Yan sa bagay na yan. And, and, and with respect to exchange rates and cost of money, especially now that pabalik tayo sa, sa ekonomiya natin and we are in the middle of an election. So I think 
the 18th and the 19th Congress dapat may continuity if hindi makakapagpasa this time because of the election. Dapat po yung study na yun, together with the COMELEC, three years, may lead time na three years eh, before the next election comes, eh magawa na po natin. Eh doon po strict po ako eh. Pasensya na po kayo. Salamat po. Salamat po. And okay, Salamat thank you very much. Natin. Mr. Nominee, just one final question because I... Uh, I want this um, spread into to the record. The uh, Secretariat of the Commission on Appointments has submitted a report about your uh, SALEN. According to the report of the uh, technical staff of the Commission, your net worth rose from 52,037,882 pesos in December of 2017 to 75 billion 100,744 three years after or December 2020 resulting in a net increase of 23 million 62,862 pesos the report of our staff however indicates that based on your reported uh, income tax returns your cumulative compensation income and income derived from other sources for the same four year, four year period amounted only to 9,075,024 pesos, resulting in an unaccounted increase in the net worth of 13,987,838. Mr. Nominee, I am sure that you have an explanation for this, uh, but can you spread it into the record, how your net worth went up and which from the report of our technical group would not be supported by your income? Madam Chair, do I have the floor, please? Honorable members. Um, the, if, you, if the Honorable Senator will notice that what grew in my uh, sal N are properties, not monies, not fungible things, not personal property. Um, I am, from all indications, what they call is a mambanulok. Sa amin, sa Muntinlupa, yun ang tawag, dahil mahilig bumili ng mura tapos na ibebenta po ng mahal. Sa dalawang bagay po, sa kotse at saka sa bahay, so, uh, I, I thought of explaining that uh, house, yung dag 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 po, if you will see my most, oh, my, my recent, the most, uh, the, the dates mentioned by the Honorable Sen Senator contains two real properties that increase the value of my salen. One in Ayala, Alabang and the other in Alabang proper, kung saan po ako lumaki. Uh, I lost both my parents the early part of this year, and meron din po silang naiwan sa akin na konting salapi. Yun po yung increase from, equal po yun eh, from 2016 before my appointment, hanggang do sa huling sinabit ko po na salin, Puro 40 million po yung cash eh. Nadagdagan po ng 5 million. Dahil binigyan po ako ng magulang ko ng 5 million. Dinagdag ko lang po sa net worth ko. Kasi wala namang historical cost yung mana. So actually po, uh, going back to Mambubulok, yun po kasing itataas ng sonal value sa Ayala Alabang. Back then, doble po pag itinaas na ni Secretary Dominguez yung bagong zonal values. So, binili ko po yun starting 2016. Inuhulugan ko po. And then yung huli, niloan ko po. Uh, reflected naman po yung loan ko sa, ano, sa salen ko. Kaya you will see there, 17 million at saka yung 8 million na loan ko po sa nanay ko. Ito po. Uh, matagal na po ito. Why, Papusha? Uh, 
yun po yung explanation ko. Uh, lahat po naman yan may papers. Ano pa po? Pag meron po akong cash na ganun, uh, I take buy into deals like uh, yun pong time deposits offered by by banks. Meron din po akong resibo nun para do sa mga placements ko po. At Yung ika-fifth year po kasi senator ngayon eh. Five years po kasi lahat yun from 2016 to the present. Kaya po dumadagdag yung cash. Pero yung both properties so significant was the one in Ayala, Alabang who rose from doon po senator Ping yun, sa housing lang po. Hindi ko po kaya doon sa, sa millionaires. Yung housing is district 2 of Ayala, Alabang. Ang gilid. <laughs> so, uh, Nung binili ko po yun, ang, ang zonal value, sir, I, I think it's 70,000 per square meter. Ngayon po, dublado na eh, yung zonal value. Kaya ako lang po binili. Uh, yun po sa Alabang proper, sa Montillano Street, 408 square meters. Uh, ngayon po, ang zonal value niya, 100,000 ho per square. Nung binili ko po, ay 20. So, ngayon po, Yung historical cost lang niya, mababa. Uh, 10 million. 6 million yung alabang. And then yung 23 million yung ayala alabang po. House and lot. Yun po ang explanation ko. And I have documents I brought. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Nominee. Uh, in other words, what your part of your explanation is that uh, because of the increase in the zonal or market value versus the acquisition cost that explains partly the increase in your net assets is that a correct summary and statement uh, uh, mr nominee correct sir okay so just one final question from our uh, on the report to our staff um you uh, you listed in your um, uh, submission that uh, you were the president of uh, hold on huh? I'll, I'll just look at it yeah um, you the staff uh, noted that in your 2017 income tax returns you disclose as part of your business interest skilled net services. Uh, I, firstly, what is this uh, uh, corporation engaged in? Madam Chair, honorable members, may I have the floor, please? Senator, uh, skilled net services is a skills directory. When I got elected in 88, and during those time, Ayala Alabang was being developed Philip Best Corporate City was being developed. Projects of Senator Villar were also there being developed. I, I passed a, an ordinance requiring all stakeholders in the city to hire, to provide employment for people. Like if you have, that's why I created the Committee on Human, uh, on Livelihood and Human Engineering. I wanted I, the Barangay Captains to provide each developer a skills directory of, of all their residents so that when they hire people it's there yung skill net services po is one outfit na ganon. that that is why i i i you know i put that up thank you very much well uh, madam, madam chair i have no more questions i would uh, second any motion to endorse the nomination of uh, of uh, of of uh, city prosecutor Bulay uh, as uh, commissioner of the Comedic uh, to the plenary. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, and thank you to our nominee for your uh, answers, uh, your candor in making a presentation to this committee. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Drilon. I just want to. Uh, enumerate those who will be asking questions because they have rest, raised their hand. So the first one to ask next would be Senator Coco Pimentel. 
and then Senator Revilla, then Senator De La Rosa. Madam Chairman. And then uh, excuse me. Senator, ah, rather, Congressman Almario. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. So we now hear from Senator Coco Quintel. Thank you, Madam uh, Chairwoman. Well, first of all, uh, let me congratulate uh, Prosecutor Bulay for securing an appointment. A uh, nomination, no? this is actually a nomination, that not effective uh, immediately. And according to our nominee, uh, he chose this uh, purposely because uh, uh, he's entertaining the possibility of uh, not being confirmed. Uh, why are you why are you entertaining, sir, that possibility, uh, Prosecutor Bulay? So, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Honorable Members, I would like to respond. Uh, Honorable Senator Pimentel, um, the last uh, nominee or, or ad interim appointee of the President to the same post uh, didn't get confirmed or he just resigned his uh, appointment and did not did not continue with it anymore i think that was what happened so yes i think uh, he did not comply with the documentary the docu the, the documentary requirements so that was his own uh, action vol yeah. or voluntary act uh, a message to the commission that I'm no longer interested. Pero kayo po, uh, well, nag super ingat. At saka, actually nabalitaan ko to, Prosecutor Bulay, na under your leadership, the Manila City Prosecutor's Office has received an award as an outstanding uh, Prosecutor's Office. Tama po ba ito? Tama po, uh, Mr. Senator. So, so congratulations. You're doing a good job at your present uh, position. So, why are we why are we leaving uh, the said position, uh, uh, Mr. Prosecutor? Uh, thank you for the question, Honorable Senator. Um, pains me to leave, especially thinking of my retirement in 2023. <laughs> Honestly, uh, I'll be filing all my requirements next year uh, in May. But you see, a, a, a chance to be of service, though how corny it may sound, to serve the Filipino, especially to safeguard the political will, which is everybody's problem. It's, it affects the entire country from the highest official to the lowest, from the peak of this, the, from, the, from, from the elite down to the masses, kung magkamali ng pipili na magpapatuloy sa eleksyon na to. But we're blessed with very young and good candidates who have a future, especially those, everybody running for president right now. Uh, they have the best intentions ever. And I would like to be part of that by safeguarding their votes and their interests. If in case I'd be given the chance to do that, I have done my service to the Filipino, Your Honor. Thank uh, you. Mr. Nomini Madam, is a prosecutor. Madam Chairperson, uh, if I may, very, very briefly lang, with the permission of uh, Senator Coco, regarding ahead. his uh, question on the award, if I were uh, Commissioner Bulay, I would have responded, you leave the stage while your audience is applauding. Thank you. Uh, that that only shows that uh, Senator Laxon is the better politician uh, between the two. 
Kaya umabot na po sa national stage si Senator Lacson. <laughs> may I continue, Madam Chairperson? May I continue? Saan ba? Kung nalimutan ko na tuloy. Ano yung alam? Ah, yes. Uh, 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 Mr. Nomini, sa prosecution service, you have also a uh, mandatory retirement age, if I am not mistaken. Yes, sir. It's uh, 65. So 65. So actually, I, I, had you chosen to stay as Manila prosecutor, the chief uh, prosecute, city, the city prosecutor, that would be until your 65th birthday, uh, May kayata, eh, May, so 2023. Yes, correct. Um, yeah, okay. So that's still that's still a long that that's still a long uh, uh, stint, no, left for you as uh, Manila city prosecutor. Had you chosen to stay? Actually, you're still you're still the Manila uh, city prosecutor, no? uh, subject to uh, confirmation. Uh, now, sir, uh, you have mentioned the many political parties that you have joined. Uh, so, fortunately for me, I can really be uh, objective with your uh, nomination because we had never been party mates. You were with PDP at a time when there was another wing and you belong to the other wing <laughs> way back in 1992 siguro yun 1992 because we were with the we, i belong to the pdp laban wing which sided with the senator uh, salonga with the L, lp during the lp pdp laban uh, coalition time so that so what, correct to honor yes yes uh, I, because I, I took note of what you said so and you have many uh, ideas on how to reform our electoral system, our electoral laws. So maybe may, may I get your position on uh, the proposal to be very strict with turncoatism? Uh, an anong opinion you dyan, uh, Mr. Nomini? Very. Madam Chair, honorable members, a very opportune question indeed. Uh, although, is there no subjudice, honorable <laughs> is there no violation of the subject? No, there, there are, Am I free to answer? There are, there are measures, there are bills, there are bills actually on uh, some, some are independent standalone bills uh, to, to penalize turncoatism. Some, the, some bills contain turncoatism as a chapter in a uh, more comprehensive bill on electoral reform. So this is not, not about a pending case, sir, just about the, the idea of... Uh, 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 making our law strict against uh, turncoatism, yung patalon-talon lang po ng partido, uh, especially now, meron tayong mga instant membership for pur purposes of elections, mga ganon. Do, uh, will, it, will it do good to our electoral system if we become more strict and we prohibit this? Madam Chairperson, Honorable Members, uh, your, your Honor is correct. When I said in the stakeholders part of the COMELEC, that should be broadened. When I said it should include candidates, political parties, more than, more than the providers of the IT and the transportation and all and the other government agencies, the candidates level in importance with the electorate because the whole political exercise designed for them so it should contain also honor honor because back in the day uh, when you say the the connotation for politicians is not that good but i can see now with the present setup with the young people coming in that it's changing for the better perhaps the 19th Congress can introduce that prohibition or the COMELEC can be empowered by the 19th Congress to enforce and implement that prohibition in the next codified election laws compilation. I agree, Your Honor, 100%. So uh, from the answer of the nominee, I get the impression that uh, he would be an advocate for uh, 
party politics, the strengthening of the party system in the Philippines. So the importance of the party system. So may mga malilit na bagay o may mga malalaking bagay din that which we can do to strengthen the party system. Are you familiar with the rule on uh, substitution, uh, Mr. Nomini? Yes, Your Honor, Madam Chair. So ngayon, you're still City Prosecutor of Manila pero nag-aral ka na ng election laws. <laughs> Inaaral mo na. <laughs> Alam ko po na magagaling kayo lahat magtanong ayo kung mapahiya eh. Salamat po. So sana tinanggap niyo na pala yung ad interim sir para effectively commissioner na kayo. <laughs> Nag-aral na rin naman kayo. So you now actually you're being asked like a, you're like you're like an incumbent commissioner of the Comelec at pagtatanong po namin. <laughs> so uh, 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 uh prosecutor Bulay Alam niyo yung rules sa ano yung that the candidate up to the mid midday midday of election may still be substituted but for for two for, for two grounds na lang to death or uh, disqualification my problem okay ako sa rule na yan my problem was the, is in the requirement of the COMELEC on the on the substitute on who can substitute ang sinabi doon it must be a person with the same surname as the person being substituted. Oh, sa akin palagay, that, that actually promotes the dynasty or the family side of politics, not the party party side of politics. So may I know, uh, Mr. Nomini, if you have encountered this rule, if you have examined the logic of this rule, and how, are you aware of the legal basis for this rule? Yan ang tanong ko, saan ang legal basis nun? Uh. Madam Chair, Honorable Members, uh, the only basis I saw was the COMELEC resolution on activities from the start of registration all the way to election, which includes November 15, uh, November 16, till the half day of uh, May 9 that allows it. The rule doesn't even mention if the candidate will file his COC again. The only requirement being Kaapelido, or should he be qualified as really a candidate for the said post? Kasi naiwanan na po lahat yun eh. Marami pong gray area dun sa batas na yun, which I think should be revisited, should be improved. Secondly, paano po kung independent? Hindi rin nila binanggit yun kung coming from the same party. Wala pong maliwanag doon. Eh ngayon po siguro, kaya ako lang ho, nakikita yung mga bagay na yan dahil politiko ako. Baka naman po kasi yung mga commissioners po ngayon, baka po hindi sila kumakandidato dati. So hindi nila feel yung mga ganung questions like, like, like us. Like you do, Opa. Your Honor. Opo, yung, 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 yung being a politician is... Uh... Uh, an advantage at the same time a disadvantage kasi siyempre but uh, in your particular case you you have ceased to be in uh, active uh, politics since uh, your last term which ended in 2010 tama ba yun Mr. Nomi 2010 Madam Chair uh, your honors uh, it was voluntary sir uh, I permit me to make Quento a little bit. That was nine years after my last term as councillor because my brother had a full three terms also. So that was effectively my fourth term as councillor. And then that time, uh, if the Honorable Chairperson will remember, uh, Mayor Presnedi had his last term as mayor and it was his wife who ran. They asked me to run for councillor with her. My reply was, ang mananalo dyan is, mananalo yung kalaban, eh mananalo ako. And then mapipilitan ako makisama doon sa, doon sa kalaban dahil hindi mananalo sa tingin ko yung wife. Which was actually what happened. So after that term, I had another two terms uh, pwede kong takbuhan which I voluntarily did not, Your Honor. And I instead opted to practice law nung panahon na yon. 
until my appointment nung manalo po si Presidente yes. Duterte. Yun po ang nangyari yes. sa akin. So, 2010 was your last election or well, last okay. participation in an election. So, okay na po yun. In your, in your particular okay. case, yung, yung background mo in politics would help you as now the referee uh, uh, part of the COMELEC kasi you, you, you have not been active in, uh, in politics. So, no one can accuse you of being still uh, politically partial because you, you were just recently a very active member of a political party or a political cause. Hindi, hindi masasabi sa'yo yun. You, uh, your last election was 11 years ago. Okay. Uh, ito lang po, meron lang akong i-correct sa sinabi ninyo, uh, Mr. Nomini, sinabi nyo, vaccines uh, pre prevent 100% of infections. Medyo mali po yun. Uh, baguhin po natin yung uh, position natin yun. Meron tinatawag na breakthrough infections. Uh, kahit fully vaccinated na, eh, nagkaka-COVID-19 pa po. Uh, Tama ba yun, Mr. Nomini? Did you, did you, do you recall state saying that uh, sentence Papa, earlier? Opo. Opo. Uh, and I agree uh, with you 100%. Pakicorrect na lang, sir. Pakicorrect. Let's uh, update our... Mea culpa. Uh, Mea culpa, uh, Your Honor. And then pagdating po dun sa SALN na, na na-raise po ni Senator Drilon, hindi ko po naintindihan kasi yung explanation ninyo eh. What did you use? Did you use... Did you use uh, acquisition cost or or uh, current current uh, assessment or current uh, value market value the requirement po with the new salen is uh, uh, acquisition cost unlike oh, okay. the salens before in 88 89 92 95 which required uh, historical cost and uh, market value i used uh, ano po uh, acquisition cost. Kaya, kaya nga, the increase in fair market value should not uh, lead to increase in net worth until, unless you sold it. So ano bang kwento? You sold the properties para you, you, you uh, anong tawag, may, may term sila dyan, you realized the, the, the profit already? D did you sell those properties you mentioned? What I meant, Your Honor, Madam Chair, was given at historical cost, mataas po talaga yung values nila because one is commercial and one belongs to a very upscale subdivision in Alabang. So, yun po yung historical cost ng Alabang at 23 million. And yung Alabang proper po mura dahil mga chahim ko po yun, yung nabilan ko, 6 to almost 10 million pesos. Kaya po yung aking salen, ang lumaki po yung property value, hindi po yung yung uh, personal property. Well, anyway, wala, uh, basta, basta just to, to tell you the truth, wala naman yung salin mo sa harap ko eh. Basta, hindi naman binibigay sa committee members yun, just a summary. Kaya akala ko, uh, kung nag-increase ang net worth mo, that's the bottom line of the salin, that means you must have realized some uh, the increase in the market value. And you realize this by, by selling, ba? So, kung nagkamali po doon, uh, kindly revisit the, uh, the preparation of your son and, and, and uh, pasensya na po na istorbo tayo ng inaanak ni Senator De La Rosa. So, uh, Mr. Nomini, para po matulungan na rin kami kasi nalito rin ako doon sa report sa amin, uh, just revisit how the son was prepared kasi as I as I understand the sal and uh, uh, market value increase in market value should not be reflected as an increase in net worth unless the increase has been realized by by selling by selling and then ma minus mo dun yung acquisition cost mo so yun yung pagkaintindi ko po so so para po mawala itong mga reports na ganito na napapatanong po tuloy kami tungkol uh, tungkol dun, Paki revisit na lang po at paki ayos kung sakaling uh, ganun po ang presentation po ninyo, uh, Mr. Nomini. Madam Chair, uh, honorable members, yes sir, I will I will do that. Thank you po. Thank you very much. Kasi, ang, ang pagkakaalam ko, meron din yata kaming isang uh, uh, nominee dito na ganun din ang, nangy ang nangyari. Uh, pati yung inherited the property yata, linagay niya, linagay niya yung net worth 
at the time of inheritance. Eh, may, ang pagkakaalam ko sa CSC, Civil Service Commission Rules, if it's inherited property, is zero mo. I-reflect mo siya, pero is zero mo siya as an addition to your uh, to your uh, net worth. I don't know. So maybe the chairperson or the secretary of the commission can uh, correct me if I am wrong with, with my understanding. So in the meantime, uh, hanggang dito na lang po ako, uh, ma Madam Chairperson, but allow me to congratulate first our nominee as Manila City Prosecutor. Uh, awarded siya as, uh, no, as uh, one of the best uh, prosecutor prosecution offices in the country. So congratulations, sir. And... Uh, <laughs> Pag sinabi ko kasing keep up the good work, ano ibig sabihin nun? <laughs> so, uh, so hanggang dito na lang muna pa ako. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Thank you, my dear colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Pimentel. I just want to acknowledge the presence online of Senator Joel Villanueva. And we now Thank you. Hear, okay. And we now hear the question of Senator Revilla. Madam Chair, just a short uh, manifestation. Uh, may I be al allowed to spread into the record my uh, full support to the nomination of uh, Chief Prosecutor Ray Echevarria Bulay as uh, Commissioner of the Commission on Elections. First of all, it is important that COMELEC membership is complete in order to uh, fully prepare for the upcoming and most challenging elections, one that will be held amid the pandemic. I am uh, confident that the, uh, that the nominee, bringing his varied experience and uh, expertise in being a former elected local government official, uh, commissioner of, of the PCGG, chief prosecutor of Manila, and uh, election lawyer, will uh, further enrich the, the wisdom of the body and articulate a unique voice in the organization. Uh, a voice that comes from someone who has been uh, elected to public office and, uh, and had been on the other side of electoral ex uh, exercise as a candidate and one that exacts uh, uh, accountability and good. Ito po yung naniniwala sa iyong kakayahan. Kaya uh, ngayon pa lang ay binabati ko na po kayo. Commissioner, that's all, Ms. Uh, Madam Chair, Senator Villar. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much, Senator Revilla. We now hear from Senator De La Rosa. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, to, to the nominee, uh, your impressive academic background with a major in statistics, combined with uh, your legal expertise is the kind of officer the Commission on Elections needs. A lawyer with an inclination for numerical analysis. In the, langu in the language of educators, you possess a whole brain approach to problem solving. Now, my question was uh, already effectively answered by you uh, during uh, your uh, previous uh, uh, statements. Uh, it's like uh, it's also uh, the same with the question of uh, Senator Coco Pimentel. Uh, kung uh, ito bang uh, uh, having uh, a former politician as a commissioner of the Commission on Elections uh, would be advantageous or uh, disadvantageous to the Filipino people. But you answered it na magiging, uh, based on your answer, magiging advantageous dahil nga you bring uh, uh, wealth of experience at uh, nakikita mo yung mga uh, faults at mga gaps sa ating mga batas uh, pagdating dyan sa uh, trabaho ng uh, kumilik. Uh, and I would like to associate myself with your statement na about the independence of uh, the supposed to be independence of kumilik from uh, uh, politicians or the LGOs in particular. Dahil nga, per my experience, when I was provincial director, uh, yung aking partner na uh, election na uh, officer, ay uh, pag sinabi ko, let's go, mag uh, operation backlash tayo. Yung mga unauthorized na mga, na mga uh, campaign materials na posted uh, 
in uh, different uh, unauthorized uh, uh, places, ay baklasin natin. Magsa sagot yung aking uh, partner na election officer na mamaya na sir, mamaya na kasi hindi pa na-approve ng uh, kapitulyo yung uh, request namin na food box. So, with that, uh, talagang halata na hindi totally uh, independent yung uh, kumilik. And uh, I admire you for, uh, for uh, stating that uh, fact. And uh, it also emboldens me to pursue with my advocacy in uh, insulating the Philippine National Police from undue political pressure coming from uh, politicians. Kaya siguro pagpatuloy ko yung uh, aking pangarap na ma-amend yung uh, RA6975 or yung PNP law na dapat wala ng uh, politiko na makialam sa pag-appoint ng uh, uh, chief of police. In the case of chief of police, kailangan talagang uh, i-approve ng, uh, ng mayor. In the case of the provincial director, kailangan talagang uh, ang provincial director, ang, ang provincial governor ang mamimili. So, in that way, uh, talagang uh, indebted yung uh, uh, provincial director at saka yung chief of police doon sa LCE, yung local chief executive, dahil nga sila ang pumili sa kanila. So, mabuti naman at uh, magkakaroon tayo ng uh, uh, kumili commissioner na uh, with the same frame of mind na nasa iyo ngayon na gusto mo na mga reforms uh, na I appreciate that. Now, uh, Madam Chair, uh, I just would like to congratulate and manifest my full support to the nomination of Attorney Ray Itzavarria Bulay based on the documents submitted to us on his personal background, his qualifications, and extensive experience in the practice of law. I am confident that he deserves to be nominated as Commissioner of the Kumilik. Ang mga parangal na natatanggap niya kagaya ng medalya at iba pang gawad parangal from both public and private entities ay napapakita nagpapakita ng kanyang dedication sa kanyang tungkulin. Ang mga ito ay sapat na para ipakita sa atin ang tunay na paglilingkod sa ating bayan. His timely nomination is one of our ways of showing to the electorate and to the people our desire for good governance. Again, congratulations to the nominee and the Commissioner of the Kumilik. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Senator Bato de la Rosa. We now hear from our Majority Floor Leader of the CA, Representative Almario. Ayong buntag, uh, Madam Chairman. Good morning to everyone. Um, I have a few questions uh, for our nominee. Um, still on fiscal independence, as often mentioned earlier. Now, Mr. Nominee, the uh, COMELEC has, uh, is an independent and fiscally autonomous body. Um, kaya naman nagkakaroon ng problema or issues on fiscal independence is because of the law which allows the local government units to assist uh, uh, logistically, Comelec and even COA and even prosecutor's office. Are you familiar with this law, uh, Mr. Nomini? Madam Chairperson, Honorable Members, yes, Your Honor. Uh, can you cite that specific provision? Where is it found? Uh, Where is it found? Local government units, uh, I think. In our case, in the DOJ, it's uh, under the DOJ law, which states, uh, the NPS law, which states that uh, local government units shall provide decent offices for um, the prosecution office assigned to their respective localities or jurisdictions. Since they are criminal in nature, uh, criminal laws are jurisdictional, so each local government unit is um, invested with the duty to provide for the needs of the national agency in their locality. Okay, in relation to that, uh, sir, 
para mawala na yung issue or ma-minimize ang issue ng uh, fiscal dependence of Comelec where you will be heading dun sa from the LGUs will you be maybe spearheading the study evaluation and inclusion uh, para sa Comelec proposed budgets for the succeeding years the provision of uh, Comelex provincial offices and maybe later on city offices na talagang last budget na lang Comelec ang pagpapatayo dito and pag-equip nito and if ever uh, that will happen that will solve half of the problem as regards to uh, office spaces the next problem would be provision of office supplies as you also mentioned earlier and uh, as well as uh, job order employees na hired by the LGU and assigned to the Comelec office uh, that, uh, again my, my question is will you be willing to take the cudgel for Comelec to uh, study evaluate and propose these measures for uh, budgeting purposes para nga magkaroon na ng independency ang uh, COMELEC. Madam Chairperson, Honorable Members, uh, the Honorable Majority Floor Leader, uh, most respectfully, uh, with respect to the COMELEC, it's Section 55 of Batas Pambansa 881, which, which commands the LGUs to provide those things for the COMELEC. Yes, sir, uh, to your question, I'm very much willing, in fact, I have lots of topics to study before the next election comes after this election. And I am sure, surely we'll be working with Congress because that is how the laws will be enacted that we should enforce and implement. So that is the only way. So I, I, I really admire very much committee meetings, so committee hearings conducted by senators and congressmen because that's where you see the real work <laughs> that's where you see your your idols working oh, oh, <laughs> that's how you see it. may i may i may i cut you short no anong, anong year yung batas pambansa which you cited 1985 po. okay vintage 1985. all right so uh, the reason why i asked that is that uh, definitely at that time these uh, constitutional offices most likely did not have enough funds for the for their existence in the different provinces and cities and municipalities. Pero iba na, iba na kayo eh. So meron na kayong uh, malalaking budget and uh, we, we, don't, we may not have to resort to that uh, specific section that you mentioned provided that the constitutional body, like the COMELEC, really works for the inclusion of their budget for the provision of these uh, office spaces, uh, office supplies, employees, and all. No? Now, having said that, and I, I, I already got your answer, that uh, you will work along that line among many that you will be uh, uh, studying after the next elections, let me ask you about the budget of COMELEC for 2022. Asabe, the proposed budget was 41.993 billion, but what TBM approved was 26.498 billion or a slash of 15.5 billion. Are you aware of that, uh, Mr. Nomini? I was able to glance at the procurement plan of the COMELEC, Your Honor. And it says there the statement of their proposed expenses. I assume that there is budget for all those things because it's the procurement plan approved by the commission. If that is what Your Honor is referring to, that is the only one I saw. Although the effect of the slash I saw also in their resolutions, instead of refurbishing or procuring additional counting machines. They re refurbished the old ones that they used before 
spent what they had in budget, I think they were able to refurbish for use 71,000 BCMs because of the slash. So we didn't get, they didn't get new ones because of the slash. So I hope that despite that slash, Comelec will uh, allocate for the normal and ordinary office equipment and supplies for Comelec buildings, which will be erected uh, between now and next year. No? And uh, I'd like to tell you again that in Dava Oriental, one will be coming up soon a 20 million peso worth two-story Comelec building uh, facilitated by Senate Majority Floor Leader Mick Subiri. And we will soon be having the groundbreaking. So, sana kahit naslash yung budget na uh, kong, meron pa rin tayong uh, ma-allocate for that building para naman it will not just remain as a building but really an office for Comelec. Madam Chair, may I reply please, Your Honor? Uh, may budget na po sa furnishings. For, 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 for Davao Oriental. <laughs> eh, itayo niyo raho muna yung building kasi hindi pa nakatayo. <laughs> yeah, okay. Thank you, Your Honor. We'll do that. Thank you. Now, for next year, with this kind of budget, we are looking at two elections. The national local elections and in December 5, the barangay and SK elections. Kasama na rin ho ba dyan yung budget ng barangay and SK elections? Yung sa SK po, parang, uh, parang hold. Ang nakita ko po, naka-parenthesis na ganun. And wala naman po akong matanong, Your Honor, tungkol doon this point. Outsider pa ho kasi ako. Okay. Uh, how much do you think will it cost the government to conduct an elections? Oh, par pareho ba ang cost ng national and local elections as against barangay and SK elections? Your Honor, please. Per, per my knowledge, uh, Mr. Majority Floor Leader, mas mahal po yung national elections because it's national in scope. Um, for exact figures, nandito po si Director El Nas, but uh, hindi ko po kayo ililigaw kasi kung hindi ko po alam, sasabihin ko. The budget for the uh, SK elections are included in the 2022 budget. Uh, Pinospone po yung SK elections, kaya po siya naka, naka parenthesis, pero may provision po para sa kanya. And then to your question, kung alin po mas mahal, I don't have the figures with me, I'll be very honest. Pero from how it looks and how it's normally done, mahal po yung national elections really. Now, I, 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 know, I don't know if my memory serves me right, but uh, sometime ago during budget hearings of Comelec, ang balita ko mga 6.5 billion ang cost ng isang election. Uh, kindly look into that, uh, Com, no? kung ganun pa rin ba for 2020. I will talk. Madam Chair, I will look into it. Now, I, I'm uh, interested. You said the SK elections was postponed. Are you referring to the SK elections of December 5, 2022 being postponed? Ang elections po ng 2022, meron pong budget para sa SK, so I don't think it will be postponed. Depende lang po sa executive department at sa Congress kung gusto nilang ituloy. But the budget there is 26.7 billion just for the S SK elections in 2022 budget. Uh, klar klaroin ko lang ha, that it, the budget is 26.6 billion for the SK elections, which also is uh, happening together with the barangay elections. So, and that is on December 5, 2022. Uh, so you're that saying... That is correct, sir. Correct. 
you're saying itong 26.6 billion is for the barangay and SK elections. That is not the figure that's given me. It says uh, barangay. Oh, yes. Yeah, maybe. It's barangay SK election. All right. Now. It's for the both, both paano, elections. Yes. Now, uh, considering that we're having a May 9, 2022 national and local elections, meaning there will be a new set of uh, officials, uh, elected officials from the pre president of the republic down to the last concejal of a municipio. And they will have their first day of office in July 1. And then uh, August, September, October, November, five months later, we will have again a new set of officials, this time from the Punong Barangay down to the last Kagawad of the uh, SK. So, in other words, for 2022, uh, summing up, we will have fresh uh, uh, newly elected officials from the Republic, from the President of the Republic of the Philippines up to the last Barangay Kagawad of the SK. Uh, what do you think, Mr. Commissioner, would be the effect of having new set of officials as against the collective effort of the government to fight coronavirus. May magkakaroon pa yan ng mga ayuda, maybe by that time, magkakaroon pa ng uh, uh, frontliners still. And when we talk of frontliners, we be the dyan, ang mga barangay people. No? So, I'm just imagining a scenario where we have all new leaders in one year, and yet we will we don't know yet the the uh, the, the face of our problem when the time comes. And kung pang mutations ang magagawa ng COVID, like now we have Omicron, uh, for December Omicron, November December. We don't know what's coming up in May. We don't know what's coming up in October next year. Now, but the basic question is. Do you think it's a good idea to have all new set of all new public officials in 2022 from the president down to the barangay to the SK Kagawan habang may kinakalaban pa tayong pandemia? What are your thoughts on this? Madam Chair, honorable members, uh, I always so that I don't have problems. It, it's been with me ever that if you go for what the law says, you will not have any problem. Now, it's our law that we hold elections every three years. So there must be, there, it has been thought hard by the framers of the Constitution and the specific law, so there must be wisdom in them. So I would say that we should follow the law. If the law says we should have this election, given this pandemic, I think we have no choice but to follow the law. Now, with respect to health protocols, uh, if that will be the problem and new mutations of the COVID variant, um, institutions like the Department of Health is always there. Institutions like the DSWD is always there. And all the other institutions that provide uh, the weaponry against this, this, this variant are still there. So basically, uh, yung leadership lang ho and yung direction ang magbabago. Okay. Uh, I don't think we have a say in that too. Well, then the conduct of a national and local elections is a constitutional provision. Uh, but the barangay and SK elections are legislations passed by uh, Congress. No? So if there is, what, do you, what is your opinion of uh, postponing to a future date the barangay and SK elections of December 5, 2022, as provided for by the current Republic Act, uh, mandating that uh, political exercise? What is your opinion of 
postponing the, the December 5 Barangay and SK elections. My honest opinion would be to go for the elections, Your Honor. All right. Now, let me go, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Commissioner, to the next set of questions. So, Commission Ho, you're given jurisdictions, no? Somebody might, a commissioner may, might be, I'm not familiar with the names of the jurisdictions, but I would imagine somebody, a commissioner might be assigned to the IT uh, section. One would be assigned to election administration. One would be for voters education. Uh, Senor, what will be assigned to you? Madam Chair, Your Honors, uh, my response, uh, Your Honor, will be there will be a total change, I think, in the constitution of uh, the commission. Because come Feb 2, there will only be three commissioners left if somebody or like me doesn't get confirmed. Therefore, the committees that you mentioned, sir, held by the three commissioners, that will finish their term will be handed over to the remainder. Unfortunately, uh, there will be only three members left. So if I get confirmed, there will be four. In less than the number of committees held by a regular commission of the COMELE. So there will be duplications, I think. I imagine, unless the president appoints or nominates two others or three to complete the commission, sir. So, yeah. so the question, in reply to the question, I still do not know what committee I will be given. Sir. You're, you're uh, referring to the retirement of uh, Chairman Sheriff Abbas on February 2022. The retirement of Commissioner Guanson on the same the same day. No, the retirement of Chairman Sheriff Abbas, retirement of Commissioner Guanson, and retirement of Commissioner Go, all on February 2, 2022. Is that correct? That is correct, uh, Madam Chair, Your Honor. Okay. So thank you very much, uh, Commissioner. Um, do you I'm sure you already know my vote, and uh, I'd like to extend to you advance congratulations, uh, Commissioner. Uh, uh, Madam Chairman, thank you. That will be all. Thank you, uh, uh, Majority Leader, uh, and uh, I, any other question from any members? If there, if none, then we ask the majority leader. Madam and Chair, Madam them. Chair, if I may, Madam Chair, sorry. Okay, thank Just you. Just one. Uh, I'm sorry. So Just we recognize you. Senator Joel Villanueva. Thank you, Madam Chair. I've been uh, listening attentively to the uh, question raised by our colleagues. I am here to support the nominee, actually, but uh, just by listening uh, a while ago, especially to uh, our dear friend, our majority leader. First of all, I'd like to support his uh, call for uh, Comelec in Mati, not because I'm an adopted son of Mati, and not because we have the same uh, first name, Joel, but because I believe in his uh, advocacy, Madam Chair. No? Uh, just one question that I'd like to raise, uh, Your Honor, uh, to the nominee, Madam Chair. Um, I, 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 we have been hearing a, a lot about this um, substitution, etc., and all uh, the, uh, uh, the 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 uh, the timeline for substitution and uh, for uh, for someone to 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 uh, replace another candidate, etc., is is over, no? But uh, right now we are. Uh, um, uh, deliberating the appointment of a commissioner of Comelec. Uh, it's kind of weird lang, Madam Chair, no? and I uh, just wanted to get the uh, opinion of our uh, nominee. And uh, again, I have nothing uh, against the nominee. I have been uh, listening attentively a while ago. I look at his uh, records and documents, and uh, I am actually uh, uh, convinced that he should be uh, appointed. It's just that, again, uh, my, 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 my concern is just the timeline, uh, Madam Chair, 
that uh, the fact that uh, right now everything is over, you can no longer substitute as uh, a candidate. But then here we are, we're deliberating an appointment of a commissioner of the Commission on Elections. It's just weird, uh, Madam Chair. If, if I can just get your uh, thoughts about this, uh, Mr. Nomi, Your Honor. Madam Chair, uh, is the query of the of your honor regarding the um, termination of the period for substitution and the commencement of the period for allowable substitution in two cases, uh, permanent disqualification or death until midday of election day? Is that a question, your honor? Um, it's not really my question, your honor, uh, distinguished the uh... Uh, gentleman, our uh, nominee, no? Ang tanong ko lang po is, uh, should we, uh, in the future, and uh, for uh, future congresses, uh, future uh, CA, should we appoint and confirm a nominee like yourself in the Commission on Appointments before all, all this uh, uh, itong set for deadline for substitution and all that? Uh, dapat siguro mauna muna yon, no? Bago tayo dumating din sa time frame na kung saan bawal na mag-substitute bawal na uh, ito tulad ng yung, yung mga panahon na ito that's 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 my question actually Madam Chair uh, honorable members I understand the question now sir uh, uh, I agree with you that nominations to constitutional commissions and all these commissions that perform very necessary function should uh, happen uh, at the onset or after the need for commissioners in this during this time i think that is the concern of the honorable senator yes the problem is included in in the as mentioned in in one of his advocacies the honorable uh bong Rebilia. Reclassification and um, and reclass reclassification positions and of terms of public officials should coincide with the activities assigned to them. So I, I I would like to think that that is why we have the civil service commission and. Uh, as the personal arm of the government together with the political arm of government to work together to at least address the problem of end of terms uh, uh, appointment of substitutes to coincide with the electoral process a very important process so that uh, this uh, august body uh, does not have to go through this uh, process in the middle of uh, finishing a very important political exercise. Your Honor. Thank you. Thank so, you, uh, Mr. Nominee. Madam Chair, I am uh, satisfied with the answer of our uh, nominee. If I may just uh, uh, raise lang one more thing, uh, Mr. Nominee. Uh, before kasi yung uh, overseas voting na uh, nagkaroon ng issue, yung mga ballots po na dumating after elections na, uh, can we uh, ask uh, our nominee uh, how he, he, he can ensure, Madam Chair, that uh, this will also this will not be repeated uh, in the coming elections? Madam Chair, Your Honor, may I respond? Um, the only the only thing that went wrong there is the timeline and the delivery. Mm -hmm. um, the most important question, Your Honor, is the manner of votation, which, uh, which provides for two things. One, country to country, one post to post, uh, the COMELEC espoused a, an automate, automated electronic system because yes. their system can handle it, while the others provides for a manual registration and counting of the votes. So you now have two different two. kinds of sample ballot. One machine filled up and the other manual, manual handwritten. And you also have a problem 
with respect to counting the votes. So I think delivery is a problem. I think the solution to that is to to prepare early and, yes. and anticipate the problem so that it doesn't happen again. And you so think we have enough time to prepare uh, right now, prepare earlier? We have enough time? I've looked at the timeline of the COMELEC now. I think we can hack the problem. And okay. uh, we have data now, strong data. See you, and before I forget, Your Honor, since you were the one who, your advocacy is the independence of the COMELEC, you might also want to study that this time we have, we can produce a very good data bank because mm. there's always a discrepancy between exactly. the NSO and yes. the COMELEC figures with respect to total registrants. Now, we have ongoing the national ID system mm -hmm. conducted by the FILCIS. They will produce a very good data bank together with the exact addresses of the citizens of the Philippines, perhaps we can make good use of that data also. Yes. When, uh, when we start. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. In fact, uh, in the next uh, uh, couple of days, probably next week, we will be able to pass the uh, Department of uh, Migrant Workers. And one of the problems and challenges that we face during the uh, deliberation of this uh, measure is the fact that uh, a lot of our agencies in the government have different uh, data, no? Talk about DFA, different data with POEA, POEA and OWA and DOLE, they have different data. Uh, yung Batas has been there for uh, more than 20 years and until now, hindi pa naayos yung uh, data system, no? And uh, that's the main reason why we also wanted to uh, ensure na synchronize yung ating efforts, especially when you talk about... Uh, uh, caring and uh, ensuring the safety of our uh, migrant workers. Maraming salamat, Ginoong Pangulo. Madam Chair, um, I have no further question and let me state on the record that uh, this representation fully support the confirmation of our nominee. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Senator Villanueva. If there's no more question, from the plenary, we can now ask the majority leader to make a motion to uh, the plenary. Madam, Madam Chair, I move to recommend to the plenary for the commission to give its consent to the nomination of Mr. Ray Echavarria Bulay as commissioner, commission on elections for a term expiring on February 2, 2027, Vice Louis Tito F. Guia. I shall move, Madam Chair. There is a motion. motion to, yes. Second the motion. There is a motion to recommend and seconded to the plenary for the commission to give the consent to the nomination of Mr. Ray Bulay as commissioner, commission on election for a term expiring February 2, 2027, Vice Louis Tito F. Guia. Is there any objection? There being none, the same is hereby approved. Madam Chair. You. Yes, Majority Floor Leader. There being no other matters to discuss, I move to adjourn this meeting. The Chair on, on motion of the Majority Floor Leader, Julie seconded. Julie seconded. There being no objection, the meeting is hereby adjourned. Thank you.
Appointments on the third regular session of the 18th Congress is hereby called to order. Let us all pause for a minute of silent prayer. Thank you. Please remain standing for the singing of the Philippine National Anthem. Thank you. The secretary will please call the roll. The honorable members of the Commission on Appointments. Abdinkula. Present. Almario. Present. Alvarez Jr. Present. Arbison. Cagas. Chipeco Jr. Present. De La Rosa. Present. Ferrer the Fourth. Present. Heron. Present. Go. Present po. Present po. Present. Present go. Watson. Noel. Pancho, Pangilina, Kumain muna siya. Pimentel the third, present. Po, present. Ramirez Sato, present. Recto, Revilla Jr., present. Villanueva. Present. Villar. Zamora. Subiri. Present. Present. Angelina is the present. Chairperson. The chairperson is present. Mr. President. Senator uh, Dillon, go ahead. Yes, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. President. I did not hear. My name being included in the roll call, am I included? Yes, sir. Senator Dillon is acknowledged present. Sir, Thank president. you very much, sir. Thank you very much. May we manifest our presence, Mr. President, uh, to our secretary. Thank you. Secretariat. Julie, Julie noted, sir. Julie noted. So this is a correct number, Senate Secretary. Yes, sir. All right. With two members physically present and the 20 members online for a total of 22, the chair declares the, pre the existence of a quorum. Jordi Leader. Mr. Chairman, I move to dispense with the reading of the journal of the plenary session held on September 29, 2021 and consider the same as approved. Any objection? Chair Hirsan, the journal is approved. Majority Leader. The Chair, may we now proceed to consider the recommendation of the Committee on Constitutional Commissions and Offices on the nomination of Mr. 
Ray Echavarria Bulay as Commissioner, Commission on Elections for a term expiring on February 2, 2027, Vice Louis Tito F. Guia. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Any objection? Hearing none, the consideration of the recommendation of the Constitutional Commissions and Offices is in order. So, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I move that the chairperson of the Committee on Constitutional Commissions and Offices, Senator Cynthia Villar, be recognized. Senator Cynthia Villar is recognized. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, the right of the citizens to vote is a cornerstone of a democratic state in the Philippines. Our national and local election held periodically where we vote for the nation leaders give meaning to the declaration on our Philippine constitution that sovereignty resides in the people and all government authority emanates from them. The Commission on Election is the constitutional body established as a way of upholding the people's exercise of sovereignty and the right to vote. It is the premier guardian of the ballot. For this purpose, it is paramount that we only put at its helm persons of probity, competence, and without ill repute. It is in this connection, Mr. Chairman, that I rise on behalf of the Committee on Constitutional Commissions and Offices of the Commission on Appointments to submit to this August body for its consent the nomination of Mr. Ray Bulay as Commissioner of the Commission on Elections for a term expiring on February 2, 2027. Born and raised in the city of Muntinlupa, our nominee has always wished to help and be of service to others. And that wish has been fulfilled throughout his life and career as a public servant, lawyer, and entrepreneur. Mr. Bulay began his professional career as a market analyst at the Philippine Appliance Corporation after obtaining his Bachelor of Science in his statistics degree from the UP Los Baños. Driven by his passion to serve, he ran and won as then the youngest consular of Muntinlupa in 1988. As consular, he sponsored ordinances that introduced the much needed reforms in the city. He served as such for a total of 12 years from 1998 no, and to, from 1988 to 1998 and from 2007 to 2010. In 2001, Mr. Bulay graduated from the Sambeda College of Law and was admitted to the Philippine Bar in 2002. He believed apart from being an elected official, being a lawyer is the best avenue to pursue his advocacies and be of help to others, especially those in need. Our nominee had a near-death experience in 2001 due to idiopathic pancreatitis, where medical specialists gave him only days to live. He triumphed over the ordeal by God's grace and by the love and care of his family and friends. The experience strengthened his resolve to give more meaning to his life by doing more for others. Thus, in 2005, he founded the Asian Hospital Charities, Inc., a vehicle for his advocacy of providing specialized health care to selected poor and under privileged patients with special medical cases and to raise health and well-being awareness by educating target communities. Mr. Bulay had the opportunity to harness his competence in election laws and procedure when he was given the opportunity to represent gubernatorial and mayoral candidates in the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao in 2006 to 2007. Likewise, he represented clients in election protest cases in 2010. 
December 2016, he was appointed by the by the by President Rodrigo Roa Duterte as Commissioner in Charge, Asset Management and Legal Departments of the Presidential Commission on Good Government. During his stint, he strongly advocated for the recovery of the foreign assets of the Republic of the Philippines and became a key role in agency's remarkable accomplishment. In June 2020, he was appointed anew by President Duterte as the City Prosecutor of Manila, the biggest city prosecution office in the entire country. As City Prosecutor, Mr. Bulay implemented stringent policies and procedures to expedite filing and resolution of cases, abolish motion for reconsideration, and inquest divisions to deter backlog and corruption, establish the public assistance section to effectively address public worries <coughs> so the construction of the prosecutor's hall and the renovation of prosecutor's offices. The initiatives and efforts enabled the Office of the City Prosecutor of Manila to clinch the DOJ 2020 Best Performing City Prosecutor Office Award. The unprecedented award came only after six months of City Prosecutor's Bulay term as Chief Prosecutor. Just this October 2021, he was also awarded with a Certificate of Completion by the Philippine Judicial Academy after successfully hurdling the first ever pre-judicature program for the appellate courts, a rigorous assessment and training program of the Philippine Judicial Academy for experienced members of the bar and bench who desire to join appellate collegial bodies such as the Sandigan Bayan, Court of Appeals, Court of Tax Appeals, and Supreme Court. To him, this experience is a blessing as it confirmed his great potential in being a magistrate of a collegial body, which can be most invaluable as commissioner of our country's poll body. Indeed, our nominee is a man with a particularly wide experience and skills honed by more than 40 years of exposure to various challenges in his days as a politician, legal practitioner, businessman, and public servant. A commissioner of his caliber is definitely what our poll body needs, given the present challenges of preparing for the upcoming 2022 national election in the midst of the pandemic. Therefore, Mr. Chair, my fellow members of the commission, it is with great honor and privilege to move for the confirmation of the nomination of Mr. Ray E. Bulay as Commissioner of the Commission on Election for a term expiring on February 2, 2027, Vice Louis Tito F. Dia. I so move, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, thank you, Senator Villar. Uh, Majority Leader. Mr. President. Mr. President. Uh, Senator Zubiri. Senator yes, Zubiri. Thank you, Mr. President. My apologies. I really wanted to be there today. I just landed in the airport, but so not to delay the proceedings. I just went online. I would like to just uh, second the nomination, Mr. President, of Commissioner Ray Bulay, who was at one point in time when I used to live with my parents in Alabang in the early 90s and mid 90s was our counselor. And I clearly remember Commissioner Bula as being one of our outstanding counselors of Munting Lupa. And not to mention the fact that he is also a graduate of University of the Philippines at Los Baños. He's my co-alumni of uh, UPLB. So I would like to second the motion of Chairman Villar for his appointment as a member of the commission. Marami salamat po and congratulations. Thank you very much, Senator uh, Saviri. All right. Um, there is a motion, duly seconded, for the commission to give its consent to the nomination of Mr. Ray Echavarria Bulay as commissioner. 
Commission on Elections for the term expiring on the 2nd of February, 2027, Vice Louis Tito Guia. Any objection? The chair hears none. The motion is hereby approved. Congratulations, Commissioner. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Majority Leader. There being no other matters to discuss, I move to adjourn. Any objection? Hearing none, the session is hereby adjourned. Please, may approach.